Hi everyone! My name is Valerie. And I'm Christina and we are from Queen of Hearts Get Your Cakes. Today we're going to share our very own Red Velvet Cupcake Recipe. Super Bizarro is our recipe. <laughs> Yeah, so it's a very, very special episode for today because we've actually had to think about are we really going to share, are we really going to share, and we thought, why not? It was a bottle actually. Our recipe is now going to be yours. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. so... So let's try ingredients first. <laughs> Our first would be your two and a half cups of whole purpose flour, or around 300 grams. Next would be your two tablespoons of cocoa powder. Put them all together. One tablespoon of what is this? Baking powder. <laughs> one tablespoon of baking soda. And sorry, it's one teaspoon of baking powder, one teaspoon of uh, baking, baking soda, soda, and one teaspoon of salt. So basically, you want uh, all the dry ingredients to be incorporated okay. very well. If you can sieve them all together, that's even better. Please make sure that you sieve your dry ingredients all together in a bowl. That's all I can do. Yeah, but the flour was pre-sifted, pre, uh, so yeah. it was okay. Uh, process. First, one full cup, 250 grams of unsalted butter. Has and to be soft. Yeah, sure. Why not melt it? Oh, by the way, before we do this, shall we do the butter milk first? Oh, okay, yes. Um, it is very important to prepare your um, butter buttermilk yeah. um, because it is the very core of your red velvet recipe and that makes it the velvety that's how it got its name because yeah, normally you would question I cannot find buttermilk in a supermarket yes. there's only milk but no buttermilk and yeah. unless you live in the US so what can they do so to prepare a substitute this is a one cup of uh, full fat milk okay and all you have to do is from that one Full cup, you take away one tablespoon of milk and then replace it with either a vi vinegar or a lemon juice. Yeah. So, where but in is this that? case, you're gonna use a vinegar so and lemon wouldn't taste. You have to make sure that you use a very nice teaspoon as well, like that. Okay, because the there's. Hearts logo. Yeah, with the Queen of Hearts, our very own design. <laughs> <laughs> because it adds magic to your baking. Yeah. It's a secret, actually. <laughs> okay, so... You can just pour everything. Is it one? Yeah, that's, a little, that's a one tablespoon. A little bit. There you go. Sorry. I feel like vinegar. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, so there you go. And then basically just stir yeah. a little bit and let it sit. We'll just let it sit for about five minutes yeah. or so. So butter first, unsalted, soft, but not melted. Okay. Your, you can also do this with a normal hand mixer, but if you have your own stand mixer, please do attach your paddle, not the whisk attachment. You can beat it for about a minute or two. So, how are you today, guys? <laughs> While waiting, <laughs> so while waiting for the bus, tell us about your uniform. Oh, oh the uniform! Yeah. It's, it's actually special because it's a new one. <laughs> yes, it's well, a new lace as well. Yeah. So we designed it. Yeah, so we designed it, and we had it made in the Philippines. But we've got all sorts of different styles of uniforms, and this is one of the newest one. And actually, soon we're gonna have our own line of chef. So. <laughs> So see Christina, the nicer one, Valerie, the, the nicest okay one. one. <laughs> so that's fine. Okay, so beat it for about a minute. That's it. And then add in your sugar. One and a half cup or about um, one and a half cups of sugar. Caster sugar. Yeah. We are going to put all the ingredients with the corresponding um, grams all in the description box below. So don't worry if we mention carbs or grams, everything will be listed down below. We just want to bring the two ingredients together. You're not allowed to 
Oh, two cupcakes today. Well, did we have to try? Good are you? But why? <laughs> she tries to... I'm trying. I still have the holiday weight that I gained. And the holiday then, has been like three months. I know, but after holiday, I went to Philippines for 10 days and so added extension. another holiday weight, extended holiday weight, <laughs> and I never <laughs> lost that since. <laughs> so yeah. So okay. going back, so those are cream, I mean the sugar and the... Uh, what's that? Butter. The butter, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So next would be your eggs, two large eggs. And then one teaspoon of your vanilla flavor. And again for about 30 seconds to one minute. You can add vanilla flavor or if you didn't want the taste or the hint of vanilla, you can omit that one. But for our recipe, we want a hint of so actually guys, the red velvet is very similar to a typical uh, vanilla, vanilla recipe. So if you want to use the same recipe for your vanilla cupcakes or vanilla cakes, just basically don't add the cocoa powder. Okay. So what makes it red velvet flavor? Do you know? <laughs> Do you want the long answer? No, I want the short answer. Well basically, it's um, red velvet got its name from the taste, the, the velvety taste of it. Trivia 101. I know, trivia. <laughs> Well, I googled it before we shoot. <laughs> no, yeah, well, the, it's called red, vel red velvet because of the velvety taste that came from the ingredient, which is the uh, buttermilk, which gives it the acidity and makes the batter really velvety. So it's not really about yes. the red color. Well, it became red before because the um, cocoa powder, the traditional cocoa powder before has this something ingredient starts with the letter A, I forgot now, but uh, when you bake it together with the acidity of this buttermilk, it turns it brown or reddish. But then it just evolved because now all the cocoa powder are now more processed, so it doesn't give that color and that's why people just now add the red food color. Ta-da! Ta <laughs> So there. Next now would be all the dry ingredients. So Valerie, can you do the onions, please? Just pour in. It's kind of thick. Oops. All the dry ingredients there and your buttermilk. See? It See has kind of like yeah. curdled and yeah. thickened a little bit. It's because yeah. of the reaction of the vinegar to the milk. Now, if Valerie is not looking, I'm going to put this straight onto the mixer, but she is here, so <laughs> I would just pre mix it a little bit. Why is that? So, actually, uh, well, to I mix it a little no, bit, there's really no science. science. No, only because you don't want the flour mixture to puff all over. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if you don't have the splash guard like this one, but um, what I do. <laughs> And it's just easier, actually, to mix this all together if it's already pre-mixed. So as you can see, it's not really right, like vanilla color. It's because of the cocoa powder. With the color red, you add it before, you add all the milk and everything, but for us, it's rather doing at the end, so at least you can balance, it's not too bright red, yeah. and you can control the, the colors as well. Because the tendency is if you put a lot of color into your um, butter, 
when you eat the cake, you know, these tiny granules in your color, it just explodes in your mouth. And, and it, it could have a bitter taste, taste as well. So just be very careful and make sure to use a good quality food color. Um, I would suggest stick with the paste or the highly concentrated one rather than the uh, powder. And some of the, some, some artists, what they do as well, they uh, the color straight away. But for us, we wanted to dilute the color first into a small amount of water. So there's a red color, but we just didn't use red. What else did we put? We put a little bit of brown as well, um, because it's not enough. It's only about, uh, is it three tablespoons of cocoa powder? Yeah, two use? tablespoons. Uh, two tablespoons. And so it's not enough to make it um, deeper brown, because red velvet actually looks like a maroonish kind of red, not like yeah, my... super bright red. So keep that in mind. And so that's why we added red and brown food color. And you can add small amount first. And lastly, guys, don't forget there's another tablespoon of vinegar here. Uh, not everyone adds this last tablespoon of vinegar, I but know. we wanted to add this tablespoon of vinegar at the end to give them more For us, velvety taste. It works. And so, um, it's Again, as we said, it is our very own recipe. Um, this works for us really, really well, so I think the extra uh, vinegar that you put in at the last makes it more velvety and more moist. You can add more color if you want. think so? Sure. It was actually... Okay, I'm gonna give the credit to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually... Her recipes. She was the one who um, baked and baked a lot before to get the good recipe, the good red velvet recipe that we have. Because yeah. we used to to sell just cupcakes. We don't sell anything else but cupcakes. We thought anything bigger than a cupcake is just really, really complicated. And so we stopped with cupcakes, plural cupcakes, for the longest time. And um, so our cupcakes have to be good. And so. Nicole, so, you was the one who kept. <coughs> <laughs> so Christina, that's all yours. With how many cupcakes did she bake to come up with the perfect recipe? Um, wow. a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of cupcakes, yeah. How many? Yeah. Oh, I couldn't, re couldn't remember now, but it is definitely a lot of trials to um, perfect, the perfect the recipe. recipe. Okay, so what we're trying to say, guys, is everything is all about practice. And passion. You don't do everything overnight, isn't it? Yeah. So this is almost done. Are you happy with the color? Yeah. Because the color as well, you well you can add a bit more color here because when you start to bake these cupcakes, it turns a bit pale. Yeah. So we can add a bit more color uh, color here. Are you ladies excited for these cupcakes? Because you're gonna bring this home. Yes. We're excited with the cupcakes, but not the calories. <laughs> That's okay. The calories. Well, you do badminton and stuff, so... <laughs> I think we're gonna go home. Yeah. Finally, guys, we have some friends helping us to shoot this video before. We've dreamt of just, you know, we have all the equipment ready, but we just didn't have time to edit. We didn't know how to edit in the first place, and so now we've asked help from our friends. And so, yeah, shout out to our friends, bro. So this is just the beginning, yes. right? Yes, yes. yes. So that's, expect more yes. vlogs. And that's why we did ask in our Facebook if you guys are uh, wanted us to do some more videos, comment on below. And we are going to aim to shoot more videos for you very soon. Or if you want to watch, have more recipes, uh, you know, apart from cake designs, if you want them to do more secret recipes, more secret recipes, yeah, we can do that. I didn't think about the the chocolate one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the chocolate. Well, she has one. You know, to be honest, Something guys, to you know for. when someone just spends so much time trying to perfect it, and then you know, it's not. To be honest, it's not overnight. It's not very easy to just kind of like share it, but then. Let's start with the red velvet. We'll talk about the chocolate and then maybe we're gonna do that. The maybe when we year. reach 1 million followers. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> it's gonna That's be more generous. Yes. yes.
So they need to like and subscribe. But it's a good start. It's a good start. This recipe is a good start. Because again, it's not copy pasted from Google or from YouTube University. <laughs> this is our very own recipe. All right, so here's our butter. And we're ready to scoop this. Yeah, we'll just um, table up. And yes, so that it. is how um, red, pale red color. It With a hint of brown color. Yeah. So, Mother's Day is coming. Yeah. Easter cupcakes. Yes. You can do good. Easter red velvet cupcakes, right? On Mother's Day. Mother's yeah. Day, yeah. So, UK Mother's Day is March 31. 31. And the rest of the world will be May. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did yeah. you know that Queen of Hearts started on a Mother's Day? Oh. Mother's yeah, Day is that your anniversary? 2011. No, no, because what happened was we just wanted to give two Mother's Day presents to two very good friends. And we said, what's better than a cupcake, isn't it? Yeah. Well, Making a cupcake. And because one of them, she really loves the red velvet cupcakes. Mm -hmm. And so we thought, well, we try to buy from um, a very re reputable hummingbird uh, bakery but then we thought well it's a little bit expensive <laughs> a little bit out of our budget and so we thought okay well if everyone's baking then i guess we can do it as well and so we thought let's just do it well, but before that we haven't turned on an oven in the philippines oh. we were two years here in the uk never baked never cooked anything and uh, you know from one cupcake we ju just went to passion obsession mm. and then we just didn't stop june 1st is our anniversary and that's when we kind of like launched the facebook page the website and we thought we are going to be a business so <laughs> yeah so, so this one um this recipe would yield so i'd say about mm, What's this? 12, 24, about 36. 36, yeah. 36, yeah. 36 cupcakes. Yeah. So 36 divided by 4 ladies is equal to 9 cupcakes per head. Wow! wow. wow. We have a mathematician in the house. Oh, yeah. She's right, really so just good. Give it, you know, just do this 10 times at least to kind of knock it down. Yeah. Flatten it. Yeah, flatten it. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to just go into bake this one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 18 minutes. So 150 to 160 degrees, uh, degrees Celsius in 18 minutes. Okay. Yeah, no. So fast forward to 18 minutes. Yes, and we're now going to check. Here mm -hmm. you go. And we've got a cake tester. So just insert. And if it comes out clean, then your cupcakes are ready. So they're ready. Ready. So why are we taking it off the, the the pan? Well, because the pan is obviously very hot, and the, the cupcake wrappers are made of paper. So if you don't take it out um, due to condensation, so it gives moisture, and sometimes the wrapper comes out of the cupcakes. And obviously, if you don't take it off, it continues with the baking time and you don't want your cupcakes to be overbaked. Best to have a cooling rack. <laughs> Where is our cooling rack? Where is our cooling rack <laughs> when we need it? Yeah, well, we have a cooling rack somewhere. <laughs> but yeah, it's best to put it in a cooling rack um, before you eat it. Lovely color. There you go. All right. So while we are waiting for the next batch, so um, what is red velvet cupcakes without the cream cheese frosting? So therefore, we're going to do the um, our buttercream recipe first. It's our stable crusting buttercream recipe, and then after that, we'll turn it into a um, <laughs> we'll turn cream it into a cream cheese frosting. So this buttercream recipe is a crusting and stable type of buttercream, meaning that. 
even at the highest temperature, even at the highest humidity. It's really warm in this kitchen now because yeah. the, oven, the oven is on. Um, you're not gonna worry that your buttercream will collapse or will melt. It's because <laughs> it's because the shortening. Yes, well, because in our recipe, we add a little bit of vegetable shortening and that makes it stable. And by the way, all of the ingredients, the recipe, is all, can also be found in all our books. We share that recipe as well and we thought to show it to you. So the reason why we're doing the, um, the buttercream recipe first is because we always use it as our base. Uh, we make the buttercream recipe first. Now, for example, you wanted, we wanted the cream cheese frosting for the red velvet cupcakes that we did. Perfect for this uh, time. Yes, time. so um, typically when people make the cream cheese frosting, they just beat in the butter and then they add the cream cheese frosting and then, uh, sorry, without the butter, it's just cream cheese frosting and a lot of icing sugar and sometimes it, it still comes out very runny and it's hard to pipe um, on a cupcake mm -hmm. and so to make it more stable what we usually do is we make the buttercream first and then we add the cream cheese frosting later yes all right so sorry without further ado well let's introduce the um, ingredients first okay so first we have again 250 grams of butter unsalted 113 grams of vegetable shortening, two teaspoons, uh, sorry, two teaspoons of vanilla, one tablespoon of room temperature water, and 600 grams of sifted icing sugar. Yes, it has to be sifted. Okay, good. Okay. Going back to our um, mixer, we're still gonna use uh, the same paddle attachment. So, butter first. Soft, but not melted. So beat the butter for about a minute or two. Okay, some people ask if they can beat the butter for longer. The answer is absolutely yes. Now the reason why people would want to beat it for longer is to um, first it doubles in size because you put a lot of air in it. And the second is because you beat it for longer, the yellowness of your butter becomes a little bit pale. Yeah, so if you're aiming, down. yeah. So if you are aiming for a lighter or um, not, you can never really make it super white, mm -hmm. but at least nearly white buttercream, then you can beat the butter for longer. I'd say about five, six minutes, yeah. and um, until it's really, really pale. But in our case, after a minute or so, that's fine. As long as it's properly beaten, you can stop anytime. I am so distracted by the red velvet. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. I'm so distracted. Okay, so next would be your um, 113 grams of vegetable shortening. Still on room temperature. Now, the moment that you add something else into the butter, you have to minimize the beating. So I'd say 30 seconds or less. Speed. Now I know a lot of people uh, didn't want the idea of adding vegetable shortening in their buttercream, um, but based from on our experience, we travel a lot. We've seen a lot of brands of um, vegetable shortening and all you have to do is just really try and get a good brand. Something that does not have a taste, does no not have a smell, yes, and um, because it, it shouldn't alter the taste of your um, buttercream. And some, uh, and because you don't really need a lot of it, it doesn't have or leave the greasy filling on your mouth. It shouldn't actually. Yeah, yeah. it's only um, half cup or 113 grams. So compared to all the other ingredients, it's just less. So, and it's just, it makes your buttercream stable. So I, I It's really actually like good because you don't need to add a lot of sugar to make it stable. So what happens is the moment that you add shortening, it just kind of lessens the sweetness of the buttercream. So it's actually good. Right, so 30 seconds or less, look, it's beautiful. Just mix them together. Next would be all the liquid. First would be uh, one tablespoon of water and then two teaspoons of vanilla. And beat it again for 30 seconds or less. You can use milk precisely, but the thing is, if you just keep on using water, if you just stick on the water, the shelf life is a lot longer. If you use milk, then the shelf life is obviously 
shorter, isn't it? So, so what's the shelf life? Shelf life, I'd say, with milk would be three to four days. Yeah. Or based on the expiration date of your milk. Yeah. But if you just use water, you can keep it a longer time. I'd say seven, ten days or two weeks. Uh, as long as you don't recycle it. But it should it's okay. definitely a different case if it's a cream cheese frosting. Mm -hmm. What we're saying is for just the buttercream yeah. um, okay. recipe alone, if you use milk, then shorter shelf life. Use water, longer shelf life. Yeah. Alright? I am melting here because of the oven <laughs> oh, no. Looking good. And last of course is our sifted icing sugar for uh, 600 grams. So, so like um, any cake recipe, you can manually fold it first or you can go straight to mixing it but before you go on proper speed or medium speed, you do pulse beating first. So I say turn it on and off first. It feels like summer in this house. <laughs> So this is not done yet, you just wanted to make sure that there's no lumps of any of the ingredients so you wanted to scrape the side and the bottom. Good? There you go. Yeah. So yeah. from that recipe now, we can easily make our cream cheese frosting. So what do we have? Okay, so um, very easy. Just prepare your buttercream first and now we're going to cream or soften um, an original Philadelphia cream cheese, which is one whole tub, 180 grams. It is 180. It is, yeah. Now ideally, if you want obviously more cream cheesy kind of flavor, you want to add a little bit more of that. Um, sometimes we do use one and a half tub yeah, of it. Or usually two sometimes. Yeah, or two is fine as well. So cream so it I'd together. Say, yeah. So I'd say this one is going to be good for half of the batch of the buttercream that we made. Yeah. Make sure guys that you cream the cream cheese from chilled temperature. Yes. That's room temperature. Because otherwise it will be absolutely runny. for you Valerie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Can I actually use this cream cheese frosting to you know pipe um, like flowers or? Well even though we combined the uh, stable buttercream or the more stiff of buttercream to the cream cheese it's still not as stiff because obviously cream cheese is very soft so to answer your question it's going to be very tricky to pipe it uh, to use this one to pipe flowers but I would definitely say that this cream cheese frosting is more stable than the typical cream cheese frosting because for it to become really stable you have to just really put too much too much too much icing sugar and then you lose the cream cheese kind of mm -hmm. um, flavor and so that's why we usually do the recipe first our butter cream recipe and combine as you can see combine it with the cream cheese now let me right. try it first I can just dip my fingers. <laughs> that is it. Yeah, just dip, yeah. <laughs> cream cheese is actually our favorite, to be honest. And I think a lot of you guys would agree to us as well. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's your favorite as well. So please do comment below if it's your favorite as well. And we hope that you try 
for this buttercream recipe. Um, oh, sorry, cream cheese. Yeah, buttercream recipe and, and cream, cream cheese. cheese frosting. Yes, and uh, let us know what you think. So now we're going to um, just put this in a simple piping bag and then just top the buttercream. Just a very simple um, combo. Wow. Disposable. Yes. So disposable piping bag. Um, if you want to use a, any particular piping tip, you may do so. So you uh, you have your disposable piping bag. It's nicer if you have the Queen, <laughs> Queen of Hearts logo, of course. <laughs> yeah. But if not, it's absolutely fine. This is another secret for good baking and piping. The magic. Yeah. There's a magic in each of the piping bags. Okay. So all you have to do is just scoop it in side if you have or want to use a piping tip you can do that but I'm just going to use a very do a very simple um, cover on each of the cupcakes and just to make sure that they're not warm yeah actually you have to make sure that all your cupcakes are cool okay because obviously it will melt your um, can I borrow the scissors please Cream cheese inside a plain piping bag without the tips. So I am just going to cut the tip. Very simple. Okay, and hold it straight down. Start outer, going in. Outer, going in. The reason why we are just doing a simple coverage. It's because we're going to pipe some flowers later on. Okay, so we don't want to um, put over the top buttercream because that will be too much per cupcake. And now the next and the most important step is to obviously try it. <laughs> before the most Christina, important. yeah, before Christina tells me off. Quick, she's coming. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try. Why not try this one here? It doesn't have any frosting. Can you do this? Just <laughs> and I'm going to show you the way I would eat a normal cupcake. Say it doesn't have any, um, like, too much um, decoration on top. So take it, take it off, sorry. And I'm going to build the other half, sandwich it. Oh. There you go. Mm. Good. So it's not very messy. Oh my goodness. Good, yeah. It's really good. There you go. Sorry, I messed it up. Yeah. <laughs> but excuse it, but we're going to make a couture style, right? So you don't do that. So a Queen of Hearts cupcakes. So that version, <laughs> that version is dead. My version. <laughs> That's her version. Val's version. So this recipe is all, uh, all for you now, guys. I'm not a secret anymore, so you can try it at home. For the beginners, it's very, very, very <laughs> easy to follow. You can go back again to all the ingredients in the list. And step-by-step -step procedures, so subscribe. It's all going to be on the comment section. <laughs> <laughs> right, so when this is all done, we're going to go back and try to decorate the cupcakes with simple flowers and... Yeah. As I was saying, guys, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And it will inspire us to make more videos for you. Mm -hmm. Do you want to change location? Are we okay here? Yes.